empty song. I swear or affirm that the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. Proceed. Good afternoon, sir. <coughs> Good afternoon. State your name, please. Tracy Benjamin Martin. And, of course, you're Trayvon Martin's father? Yes. You've been here for the testimony throughout the trial, correct? Correct. Including today when we had a couple of officers testifying about an event where you had gone to meet with uh, investigator Chris Serino at Sanford Police Department. Correct. Remember that? Yes. Do you remember the event itself, having gone down there? I believe you went with Brandy Green? Yes. Okay. Um, did you have a conversation with Officer Serino about why uh, he wanted you down at the station? Um, yeah, initially, um, we were going down to the police department to um, make sure that he had verified um, that Trayvon had been identified. Um, Detective Serino didn't bring me to the station, I actually um, went to the station myself. Okay. With Miss Green? Correct. And at some point, um, you did go back to his sort of office cubicle area and listen to some tapes, is that correct? Correct. My understanding is, from my knowledge of the discovery, um, was that you listened to a number of tapes, um, one of which was the tape um, that we're identifying as the Lauer 911 call, correct? Yes. And he did play that for you? Uh, yes. And were you listening to it as he played it for you? Yes. I uh, understand that it was uh, difficult to listen to. It included the shot that ended your son's life, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, at the end of that tape, do you recall Officer Serino asking you whether or not you could identify your son's voice? Uh, not, a, not those exact words, but some to that nature, yes. Okay. Do you recall the words as best you can recall that he used? Um, as best as I recall, um, after he played the tape, he um, basically just said, do you recognize the voice? And what was your response? Um, my response was just simply, I didn't uh, tell him that I didn't know, I didn't tell him, no, that wasn't Trayvon. I kind of, I think the chairs had wheels on them and I kind of pushed away from the away from the table and just kind of shook my head and say, I can't tell. So your words were, I can't tell. Some to that effect, but I never said, um, no, that that wasn't my son's voice. You um, heard Officer Serena testify that you said no, correct? Correct. Um, and you heard um, Officer Singleton also testify that she was about eight or ten feet and she heard you say no, or an indication that you acknowledged it was not Trayvon's voice. Is that correct? Um, before uh, Officer Singleton even testified, the, the first time Officer Singleton testified, that was the first time I ever seen I I had no idea that she was even in the vicinity. Right, you didn't notice her there, correct? No. But you heard her testify that she heard you, correct? Yes, I heard her testify. As you were here today. I heard her testify to that, but I didn't see her in the room. Okay. Did you ever um, say to anyone, did you ever ask to hear the tape a second time? Not at that, not at that moment, no. Did you ever tell anybody that you had listened to a cleaned up version of the tape and were then able to identify the voice on it? What do you mean cleaned up version? I'm asking you, sir. Uh, to my knowledge, the tape that I listened to is the same tape that's, that's circulating. That's the only tape I know of. I, I have no knowledge of a cleaned up version. Okay. So the question then is, did you ever tell anybody, um, your attorney or anybody else? I never told anyone uh, no. that I listened to a cleaned up version of the tape. Okay. Or an enhanced version? I have no knowledge of an enhanced version. Okay. Um, did you ever tell um, Sabrina Fulton, your ex-wife, if that you had listened to the tape at um, Officer Serino's desk? I hadn't told her, no. Was there any reason why you didn't give her that information? There was a lot of stuff going on. Um, we had just um, buried our son. Um, a lot of emotions, and you know, you just don't think of 
every little detail that you've been through. Um, it was a, obviously is it was a tragic and still is a tragic time for us. So um, just to answer your question, did I tell Miss Fulton um, that I listened to the tape? No, I didn't. Now you were at the mayor's office when the tape was played to the entire family, correct? Correct. And you were there as well, listening to the tape. Yes. Did you ever take an opportunity to tell Miss Fulton or any of the other family members before the tape was played what they were going to hear? No, I didn't. Is there any reason why you didn't advise them of that? I'm sure they were, they were aware of what we were doing at the mayor's office, so there was no reason for me to confirm, in fact, um, that we were there to listen to the tapes. And was it at that time in the room with everybody else? Or, or when, what did you say about the tape when you listened to it that time in the mayor's office? What do you mean, what did I say? Did you acknowledge anything about the tape to anybody? Um, after, listening, uh, after listening to the tape um, for maybe 20 times, um, I, I said it was, I knew that it was Trayvon's voice. Um, I didn't direct that towards any family members. Matter of fact, uh, I think the family members had started leaving out the room. Um, it was too much for them. They couldn't take it. Um, and I just decided to sit there and, and listen to it. Had you listened to the tape? between the time that Officer Serino played it for you on about the 28th of um, February and about the 16th of March when you heard it in the mayor's office? No, um, listen to it um, in Detective Serino's cubicle and then again in the mayor's office. Okay, no time in between? No. Okay. Have a moment, Your Honor. Thank you, Cross. So, Martin, even at this time, is it hard for you to believe that your son is not longer living? Um, it's very difficult to believe that um, Trayvon's not living. Um, okay. As I said over and over, that was my best friend in life. And, to have him gone is, is tragic. Okay. Um, you were asked two areas that I want to cover with you that Mr. O'Mara asked you about. Uh, the 911 call that you heard, or the, the calls, the recordings that you heard at uh, SPD or Sanford Police Department. You remember going there? Yes. Now, in terms of this jury understanding the context, that your son was killed late evening Sunday, February 26. And you would have gone over to the Sanford Police Department uh, the morning of the 20, I believe it's the 28th. Do you recall that? Yes. And I believe also you really found out your son was dead at some point actually the 27th. Is that true? That Correct. Monday? Yes. Okay. And was it still hard for you to believe that your son was dead? Um, it's still hard to, to this day that he's dead. Okay. And officers had come to your house, I believe, on the 27th and told you that your son was dead, right? First, they wanted to verify that that was your son in terms of because he didn't have a ID with him. So they wanted to, for you to verify that he was the person that they found out in the courtyard of that retreat of Twin Lakes where Brandy Green lived, right? Correct. Okay. And I gather you went and got a picture of your son just to show them who your son was, or did they show you a picture of the person that at that time was just described as an unknown person out of the courtyard? An unknown person. They showed you a courtyard. They showed you a picture of a body there on the ground, correct? Check, Your Honor. May we approach? Yes.
All right, proceed, Your Honor. Yes, you may. Mr. Martin, I was asking you about the 27th. Detective Serena or Investigator Serena had come and showed you a photograph. Is that correct? Uh, and you identified it as being your son, correct? Correct. Okay. Now we move to the 28th, where they asked you to go down to the police station, correct? Correct. And you go down with fiance at the time, Brandy Green, correct? Correct. Okay. And at that time, they played several recordings to you, correct? Uh, yeah, they played a series of the, the uh, 911 calls. Okay. And these were calls where uh, neighbors that had called in regarding what you now knew was the death of your son. Correct? Correct. Correct. Right. And, and the recordings uh, were of people calling and explaining that, that somebody had been shot. And I'm sure you listened to the person now identified as Ms. Gerdaika, the lady who went hysterical in the 911 call. You were listening to all that is what I'm saying. Um, to my uh, recollection, I... I don't think uh, Detective Serino played each call in its entirety. Okay. Um, he played. A, he played some of the. To my knowledge, he played some of each call um, leading up to to the, the the last call with the fatal shot. All right. So they played the call then of the cries for help, and then you actually hear a shot. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And am I safe to assume that you were still at that time were in denial? in the sense of not wanting to believe that your son was dead. Correct. Okay. And this was an emotional time for you. Would that be fair to say? Very well, emotional. I, I must object and refer to then the Then give me your, your... Your previous ruling. Okay. We're now on to the day of the phone calls being played overall. This was a very emotional time for you while this was going on. In terms of... Oh, I'm talking about the day the recording was played for you at the at Sanford Police Department, correct? Correct. Okay. And you listen to the recording, and as you stated, described to the jury, you pulled your chair back in disbelief that you were actually listening to voices for help and also, more importantly, also a shot. Correct. Um, you, you, you realize that that was the shot. They that killed my son, yes. Did you really know what to do at that point? Um, no, I was, my world was, was from that point uh, until the day. My world has, has just been turned upside down. Okay. And let's focus on that day. Then, after you heard the, the cries for help or the recording that's been referred to as a louder recording, and then also the shot, at that same time, we're right there. Investigator Serino asked you about the recording, if you could recognize the voice, correct? Correct. Okay. And I'm assuming that was difficult for you to even contemplate identifying or not identifying the voice. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And as best you could, you attempted to answer Investigator Serino. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Now, as, as was pointed out, There was a lot of commotion in that recording, wasn't there? The yells for help, the person calling, and then most importantly, the shot, too. How, in terms of your mind, what was going through your mind, can you describe through your jury what was going through your mind when you were listening to that? Um, basically, what I was listening to, um, I was listening to my son's last cry for help. Um, I was listening to his life being taken. Um, and. I was coming, trying to uh, come to grips that um, Trayvon was here no more. Um, it was, it was just tough. And as uh, Mr. O'Mara pointed out, subsequent time you were present when that recording was played again at the mayor's office. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And I believe your former wife, um, Ms. Fulton, was present, correct? Correct. Okay. And I think you said you wanted to listen to it. Did you listen to that recording and then other recordings at that time, too? Um, I can't remember. I, if 
I can't remember if it was all of the 911 calls or was it just that last 911 call. Um, but I, I do remember um, that I, I took whole control of the, the mouse or the clicker or whatever it was that they had. And I was able to rewind that, that same tape over and over again. Did, did, did you want to, I guess, hear your son's voice over and over? Just to, Did that bring you any comfort, I guess, is what I'm trying to ask. Um, object again, and same relevancy objection as before in the court will Overruled. May I have a question read right back to further argument? No, no, I'll be glad to rephrase the question. Okay. Thank you. Um, you were playing that recording over and over. Did you, were, you were still dealing with this? That's his all. death? Yes. Now, this was back, this was, God, it was sometime in March. It was later. It wasn't like days later. You were still having to deal with his death? Correct. Okay. And you played it, you said, did you time, did you actually write down one, two, three, four, five, or you're estimating you played it at least 20 times? I'm estimating that I played it maybe 20 times. Okay. And you played it over and over. Why? Were you trying to deal with this? Or what, why were you doing that? Uh, it wasn't as much as I was trying to deal with it. Um, I was just trying to figure out uh, on the night of February 26, 2012, why did the defendant get out of his vehicle and chase my son? Okay. And you weren't there when it happened, correct? Correct. And this... Recording, I guess, is one of the last things in terms of hearing the voice and the shot. You were trying to, as best you can, figure out what happened or what, why it happened? Yes. Thank you, sir. No further questions. Can you redirect? Yes. Do you believe that the police lied when the two officers said that you said no about it being your son? Objection, Your Honor, some property about what somebody it's else is saying. Foundation question for another one, Your Honor. I think it's necessary. Well, you have to rephrase your question because it's not proper okay. to have a witness comment on another witness. I'll do it this way right. then. Did you ever instruct your attorney, Ben Crump? You didn't have Ben Crump when you listened to the tape on the 27th, or the 28th, did you? No. He was not your attorney at that point? No, it wasn't. Later, did you instruct him to say that the police lied? when they said that you couldn't tell, when they said that you had said no about it being your son's voice, did you instruct your lawyer to say that? I never instructed anyone to say anything. You never instructed Ben Crump to say that the police had lied about that? I never instructed anyone to say anything. Did you instruct your lawyer, Ben Crump, to say that the audio has since been cleared up and now you can hear it better? No, I didn't. Nothing further. Thank you. May Mr. Martin be excused? Yes, Your Honor. Subject to recall, officer. Okay, Mr. O'Mara, may Mr. Martin step down? Certainly. Okay, Mr. thank you, sir. You may step down. Call your next witness, please.